Hello, welcome to Talk Real in Sarajevo. Uh, we're here with two activists who are part of the Democratic Left 2018, which these days is launching its manifesto uh, here in Sarajevo. These two activists are Alma and Inej, um, and with them I'm hoping to talk about the situation here in Sarajevo, how activism um, works, and a little bit some of the challenges that activists are facing. So maybe, Alma, to start with uh, you, I know you're very active on public space issues, also mm -hmm. issues to do with common goods. Perhaps explain a little bit um, some of those issues in, in, in Sarajevo and Bosnia, and what kind of strategies as activists you can use to address them. Uh, so, uh, regarding spatial planning, it's a very complex issue here because, first of all, we have a very complex political system in Bosnia and Herzegovina. We have, like, state level, which is, we can say, weakest level. Uh, then we have two entities, uh, Republika Srpska, which is centralized, and then we have Federation, which is uh, made out of cantons. So you have also cantonal government and then you have municipalities and then you have municipality government also in that and then we have this low, lowest le level, I think in English uh, the right translation would be local assemblies. Uh, but it's not, uh, it doesn't describe it so well. We call it Mjesna Zajenica and although they don't have let's say power, but they cannot be, um, you need to contact uh, them. And, yes, and uh, the, I see uh, space uh, to, to work with, uh, with them uh, because they are uh, closest to the citizens. So now when you need to make a decision, uh, for example, some regulatory plan is being uh, uh, changed and also in Sarajevo, which is very important, we have this, um, how to say it, city level, level of city of Sarajevo. Mm -hmm. And now imagine when some changes are being made in the plan and that changes will have significant influence on people's life. How, uh, how you can swim through all of these, let's say, bureaucrat decisions. Mm -hmm. And which, uh, what is very interesting, we have a, a lot of mechanisms, like uh, for uh, direct, uh, uh, direct uh, inclusion of citizens in decision-making processes, but nobody is using them. Yeah. Uh, it, Maybe it, give us some examples of, of the problems that that causes. Uh, that causes that, uh, for example, uh, all, the, all the construction in Sarajevo is profit-oriented mm. and uh, a recent case in, in one part of Sarajevo was, although there is on every 200 meters like a gas station, they are bu building another one. Mm -hmm. And people don't want that gas station in this uh, nice, uh, peaceful neighborhood, mm -hmm. but nobody's asking them for their opinion. Mm -hmm. Although they have even legal right to, uh, to be asked, mm -hmm. and their opinion needs to be taken into account, mm -hmm. but what they made in law is like, okay, we will listen to you, but we don't need to take your comments into, uh, into planning into and yes. And so what kind of strategies is you as an activist using to try and <laughs> gather people to address this? Yeah, that's very, um, we need to uh, also have in mind that uh, political dynamics are here, especially in Sarajevo, are very hard. Mm -hmm. And when you go uh, to the field to work with people, uh, sometimes they are afraid. Uh, because mostly their jobs are kind of related, related to political interest groups that have their influence in almost every uh, public uh, facility or even in private, because you, you will not get tender if you are not good with certain line that is on power and so on. So when you go into the field and try to help people to use either legally recognized mechanisms or to try to push them to use something less formal, to be brave, to demand, to protest. Uh, it's very um, tricky because in one way you are, you are exposing those people to threat of political, uh, I don't know uh, how to name it, like uh, 
uh, they will be excluded either on the job or marginalized because of political relations. So what we are trying to use first, we are trying to, uh, uh, to build connections. I think that is very important because we have a lot of uh, struggles in different parts of town and people do not know for each other. Maybe we can help them to, to connect and then to share experience. That can be also very good, uh, uh, very good to share uh, that knowledge that somebody already has. It's, uh, now I will mention one uh, example. It's not related to Sarajevo, but it's related to a small, small village, Kruščica. And recently people there had this um, uh, investor came and uh, he wanted to build hydropower plant. And we have a lot of issues also with hydropower plants here in Bosnia. And first people that came to help to those people were from this small village that is near them that was, make, that was guarding river for 365 days and didn't let co construction uh, uh, on the land side. So they came uh, to this village and told them, we will now tell you what were problems, what you can do, how to construct shelter, even that, you know, it's, uh, those are operative questions, but they are very significant, significant. So we are trying to share either legal knowledge, either experience, uh, either to connect them. And I think uh, this, this is time consuming. It cannot be done through, uh, let's say, NGO project logic because you need to be there. We need to go out from our safe positions and to go on the field and try to help people. Uh, I'm the Museum was uh, my favorite initiative because actually it was really successful in the end. Alma had a great overview of our institutions, how it's managed on state level, on entity level and stuff, but um, the one really interesting thing when it comes to all of us who work in culture is that we don't have state ministry of culture. Our ministry of civil affairs uh, has a department that um, deals with cultural policies, projects and stuff. So uh, in 1995, after uh, signing the Dayton Agreement, uh, seven state-level institutions of culture uh, were left in kind of status quo. So uh, they, they don't have founder and they don't have budget line. They don't, don't have step out financing. So they were managing to survive uh, with the help of the grants from Ministry of Civil Affairs. But uh, in the end that Grant was like three times smaller than it was used to, and it wasn't enough for anything. Our National Museum is uh, something the people called the British Museum of Balkans. It's really uh, massive, it's really impressive. It has uh, around four million artifacts, and uh, people who were, it had like 120 employees, uh, workers before the war. Now they have like 60 workers and they try to manage that uh, building and the artifacts the best they can. In 2013, they decided to close the museum. That was like the desperate call because they thought, when we talked to them, they thought that someone will care, actually, but no one cared. So, uh, until 2015, when uh, Aktia, uh, NGO that I cooperate with, started the action, uh, I am the museum. Um, that action consisted of an exhibition of portraits of the workers of the museum, uh, shifts for the museum because uh, all those workers, although the museum didn't didn't function, didn't work, uh, people, workers were coming every day in shifts, and they were guarding the artifacts and the building and everything. So we gave the opportunity to every citizen in Sarajevo and Bosnia and Herzegovina to come and do their shift, and in that way it was possible for them to identify 
with the workers. The important thing is, as I work in communication field, for me the most important thing is was that um, uh, they were framed as criminals in most of the media. Uh, most of the media comments were um, in favor of them doing commercial stuff and trying to survive, writing projects and stuff, not uh, putting the issue of state financing like uh, under the table. So uh, we did the action and the museum was, long story, to take long story short, the museum was reopened on 15th of September of 2015. Uh, it, there were many promises because uh, our municipalities, state level, entity level, they all signed a memorandum for financing. But uh, most of them do not uh, respect that memorandum anymore. And the museum now, two years later, is again in problems. They don't have heating, although they did many of commercial activities that were like suggested to them. They don't have heating, they still don't have a solution for uh, their issue. Not only National Museum, but the other six cultural institutions, Historical Museum, which is also really active on every field and really supporting in every activist initiative here in uh, Sarajevo. Mm. They own the same problem and, you know, next year there are elections and no one knows what will happen and who will come as a minister of Ministry of Civil Affairs and what would be uh, their agenda when it comes to cultural institutions on the state level. Is there any move in Sarajevo for activists to take part in the elections? Does that seem like a possibly successful strategy to make new parties or, and so on? Or? We are talking a lot of, about that, but, uh, but I think Alma has some points because uh, recently we were <laughs> discussing this at one uh, no, but, gathering. But I, I will not go uh, into that example, but I will mention something a bit from past. Like in 2010, uh, there was this Dosta movement, like enough Dosta, and uh, it was, I would say, it has bring uh, SDP, Social Democrat Par Party, on the power. But uh, now, because I was part of that movement, but now when I'm looking looking that, um, I think that was really bad, because when the SDP came on power, the situation even got worse. So now what we have regarding poli po politics is this uh, untrust and. Um, it's not easy to go into politics. You need to have a lot of money and nobody will support ideas that are, uh, let's say, left ideas. If, you are, uh, if you are, uh, your struggles are for social security, uh, if you are uh, tackling the issue of uh, capital and uh, neoliberalism, because also what we need to have in mind um, that in Bosnia we are under heavy protection of international community. Also international community can be tricky term, but it's uh, uh, widely used in media, so that's why I'm uh, mentioning it. And uh, geopoliti uh, geopolitics, uh, also geopolitical relations among those, let's say, international players, are, are also complicated th than uh, a situation on the field for us. Because uh, what was yesterday, if something uh, changes in this relation, tomorrow we will have totally different situation in the field. Uh, sometimes even international community, if you ask their help, uh, stays a bit, uh, you know, they are protecting their safe positions. Sometimes they, they will tell you that, uh, for example, Denis Vizdic, which we uh, see as problem, he's uh, our politician, uh, they will say, but no, he's our reliable partner. And now imagine how hard it is to build uh, one, uh, po po one political subject, I would say, not even party. Uh, here, but nevertheless, I think first step that we need to take is to politically educate uh, citizens yes. before all. And what we have also, which is 
complicated this, uh, let's say, poli uh, politization of our struggles is this depolitization. And this is a major problem because here people are under pressure. It's, everything is about politics. And then for them it's easiest to say, we don't want to be political. And if your uh, action is political, they are afraid of it. Uh, and you need to explain them. But if everything is political, we need to be even more political. And now this is a long process, and you don't, uh, you cannot go into the uh, elections, into uh, a political arena to like fight that. just no. like that, if you don't have, uh, let's say, if the terrain is not set as it should be, if your idea would not be recognized by the citizens. So we are kind of taking a slow steps, but I think that is also very important. Yes. Because at that discussion we were, uh, talking about the similar initiatives in Serbia and Croatia, mm -hmm. of course, uh, and why the situation is a bit different here. And we think, I think people are really disappointed, people are scared. Uh, many of the activists lost their jobs, even like 10 years ago when we were having like large protests after the murder of a uh, young boy, Denis Pernjavac, here in Sarajevo. Uh, that was like six years before plenums. So people then were losing their jobs because, and having pressures because of uh, protesting. So people are scared and when they uh, try to, um, to win, when they try to overcome that fear and go and protest, they have different pressures and somehow you know how it happens with initiatives, they don't uh, succeed every time and when they don't succeed, uh, you take it as your own personal defeat. Mm. And I think that's why we are maybe a bit different because maybe we had some success stories in the past but we d didn't present them very well to the public. The citizens don't see them as their win, which it, I think is a really a uh, big issue. Maybe then to, to, to close as a final question, um, how do you think that, that activists from throughout the, throughout the country, perhaps even throughout the region, can, can work together to ensure a kind of continuity and an onward, onward progress, if you like, in building activism, building political education? Mm. Do you want first? Well, I, I will go first. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I think uh, our great issue is that we don't know much about each other. Uh, not only in the uh, region, but also in the country, in, Bos in Bosnia and Herzegovina, and also in Sarajevo, as Alma mentioned. There are some initiatives and people don't know uh, about them, even in the same city. So I think the first step would be to, um, to meet, to talk, and to see what are the common things in our fights. And to work on them and to, uh, to try maybe to identify one cause that we can all work on in the next period of time. And then, of course, at the same time, do the education of the citizens. Because mostly they don't know the mechanisms they uh, can use, they uh, don't, uh, they are afraid of politics, they are afraid of people who talk about the issues, they close their eyes and we must uh, make a big ma mass of people who is not afraid and who will not close their eyes and we can do it only by cooperating and by educating and talking to, to the citizens. Uh, first of all, we need to reclaim institutions because when you go in front, for example, uh, usually we go in front of uh, cantonal government and uh, when they are having an assembly and they, they are making certain decisions that will influence something that we are struggling for, uh, we are bringing them materials, you know. We make analysis, we bring materials, materials and we try to give to them and to ask them, please vote in favor of this, here you have analysis. We do everything that political parties should do. And the um, problem is when you go in front of that institutions, 
They don't feel comfortable because they think that space is reserved only for them. And that is not true. Uh, anybody who has even the lowest level of political education knows that that is not true. That is first step. Um, regarding uh, building connections, I think we need to have this wider front that should be based upon uh, issues that we all have. For example, privatization. For example, uh, protection of resources. For example, uh, who will go govern resources? Slovenia did fantastic move. They put into their constitution that water don't belong to anybody. And if somebody, uh, that only public, uh, public facilities can govern water as, as resource and people of Slovenia like are owners of these resources, which is a great step. And we can, by that, learn from each other and maybe upon one issue build wider front. I, I really don't have answer to your question. Maybe this can be something to think about. Uh, commons uh, can offer, as a, as a concept, can offer some good ground maybe to build uh, a certain front. But I think this topic is probably for, for next, uh, next session and you can talk only about that. So I, I will uh, stop with this. Great. Well, thanks, Alma and Ines. And indeed, the discussions here are going to go on uh, all day around the democratic left 19, uh, 2018 manifesto, 1918 manifesto, it's a slight uh, slip, it's 2018 manifesto. Um, thank you very much and see you again on another issue of Talk Real. Thank you.